Good morning, folks. We've got a full slate of climate articles today and two related to the disaster cycle to close. We are starting, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on our star pretty quiet. A few filaments left to CMEs from the limb, not aimed at Earth, and in the Earth-facing position, things are calm and collected, even the plasma filaments. The solar wind at Earth has finally peaked and is beginning to wane. Top panels, that's the purple line on the left, yellow line on the right. Solar wind speed peaked just after yesterday's show and after the slow onset, it has allowed Earth's magnetic field to handle the stream without storm conditions. Green bars at the bottom. Diving right into the articles here and recalling one of the numerous studies on geothermal or volcanic Antarctic melt, rather than from atmospheric changes. And today we've got another one, an eruption they missed 20 years ago, and in the very last place they were needing an explanation for those extreme changes. In Antarctica, nearly all the high melt zones have volcanoes going off underneath them. Now, for the next few articles, we really need to remember those three recent mini-series episodes on climate. They are the last three videos in the full climate playlist on our channel. Starting in episode one, where the thermosphere was in focus, another nod to the geomagnetic control over the neutral densities in the upper atmosphere, and also the temperature. Remember, it's the density, winds, temperature, and thermospheric super rotation. This one sniped by Arecibo before it broke, and nudging towards lessons from episode 3 in the series, where the lower atmosphere was in focus due to the global electric circuit, and the upward plasma flows represented the other side of that circuit. And we recall it's not just the polar region, but at lower and equatorial latitudes as well. Excellent one looking at the after effects of the space weather forcing bleed into those tropical regions. This is where the electro jets, the Jupiter auroral wave video, and the global electric circuit come together to force the total vertical atmosphere column. Lastly on the climate front, one that plays towards the upcoming episode 4 in that climate mini-series, and it turns out that after all the new additions, the CMIP6 climate change model and forecast carry the same biases, same uncertainties, and oversensitivities as CMIP5, which is because making an ensemble of a dozen bad models does not improve your outcome, and this takes every word you heard from the IPCC this year, or anyone else this year scaring folks about climate change, pretty much throws it in the trash. They are talking out of their backsides. And now we come to the polar holes, the plasma depletions during low geomagnetic activity. This is the low end of the space weather interaction scale and where they find the latitude extent larger than before, they presume it was an error made by all previous studies, rather than the scarier explanation that it's growing and scaling as Earth's magnetic field is weakening. Lastly, addressing a comment question, yes, According to my friends at NASA and universities, they named this micronova for a reason, and you know that reason. Yes, they are going back to the moon to study the craters at the South Pole, and yes, the device will be able to deliver impactor versus arc discharge evidence, and yes, its contract is part of the tipping point program for a reason. And my friends at NASA say, this truth is going to be thrown in our faces, somewhat covertly over the coming years, and almost nobody will see it. We sure will. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.